Yeah, there's a bald eagle up in that tree. Oh, there it goes. Oh, wow. Hey everyone, Julian here. Welcome back to My Week on Film. So today we're out here at Blackie Spit Park and I've got the F6 with me again today. Today's video, I'm inspired kind of by a comment that I had on a previous video by somebody who said, you know, the cameras are great, but you know, at the end of the day, aren't they just a light tight box? And aren't the lenses more important? At the end of the day, it's a tool for capturing the decisive moment. And looking back at, you know, one of the greatest who's ever been in photography, um, I was looking at Henri Cartier-Bresson's book and how he was talking about capturing the decisive moment. And you know, he was using, you know, rangefinders, Leicas, where there's no manual focus, it's probably, you know, no uh, light meter even. And he would stand there and wait for that shot and capture that decisive moment and wait for the scene to happen. And I think for the type of photography you're doing, if it's wildlife, if it's birding, if it's sports, if it's you know, weddings where the, the lighting situations are really chaotic and you're shooting on film, having a camera that has really good light metering and autofocus, I think is actually the most important thing. And with lenses, especially on film cameras, the lenses never had to resolve more than what film technology was at. If you're looking at, you know, the latest 100 megapixel sensors, you need the lenses to be able to resolve that type of image. And so I think on modern cameras, I think the lenses are more important than in the past. If you look at some of the worst lenses that camera manufacturers have ever made, they were still great on film because we could never really tell the optical issues that we can now tell when we mount those lenses on digital cameras. And so I think, you know, for the type of photography that I like to do, I want to be as confident as I can in capturing that decisive moment. And so having autofocus that's bang on just as good as a modern DSLR and having the exposure just right so that even with the latitude that you get with film, it's going to be as good and close to the final product as you want. I'm going to throw in some Velvia 100, which is slide film. And slide film is notoriously really tough with exposures. If you're off by a little bit, it'll really show. So I'm really trying to test out the F6 with its um, 3D matrix metering with slide film today. Because we don't have much recording time today, I'm going to move fast. Smells so good. So over down by Burnaby, it looks like uh, the clouds are actually just dumping snow out. So it's uh, it's really nice. Usually when you're around here and you can see clouds, sometimes it's gray and you can tell it's rain. But right now it's just pure white. And it's just like, just dumping on Burnaby right now. It's pretty nice. When a camera's well thought out and you can use all the buttons when you have gloves on, that makes a big difference when you're actually using the camera. Um, and that's another reason why I love, you know, Nikons. And, you know, I've played with a lot of different camera brands, but I find all the buttons are just so tactile. They're in the right spot where you want them to be. And, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad about other camera brands, but Nikon does it the best. See, my meter is telling me one five hundredth of a second, and I trust it. Lighting's changing a lot on us right now. The sun's kind of peeking through the shadows as we go. 
Now I'm going to go 1,000 just to freeze it. I'm just hoping it takes off. There it is. Bang. Wow. It's looking around. It's looking for dinner. Okay, let's find some more birds. I have here probably the worst lens Nikon's ever made. This is the 24 to 120 f 3.5 to 5.6 VR. Um, this was not a good lens. It's uh, very soft at 24, it's at 3.5, but once you get to about 28, it becomes f4, and the rest of the range is just 5.6. But I picked this lens up, it was about a hundred bucks. Um, it's in like great shape, it's made in Japan. It's built like a tank. It's got VR, where even the 24 to 70, you don't get VR unless you get the newest one. On a film camera, it's pretty good. Once you stop it down, even wide open, the resolution for film is very forgiving. You're not dealing with these huge resolution cameras and it works great, it's a tank and it's super versatile and cheap. Oh man, the light's sweet here. Okay, I gotta switch lenses back. Blood, sweat, and tears are going into photography. It's, it's cold out here and my skin's cracking. Let's not knock this over. Yeah, cool. And then let's see what I get when I come close. I haven't tested the close focusing of this lens yet, but it seems pretty good. These old barnacles. Okay, so I'm at, got to open up a bit. And so I'm at 1 30th of, of a second. And I'm just gonna count on that VR to help me out here while it's windy and cold. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, let's see how that turns out. There's some stuff happening. We're at Crescent Park. This is um, in Surrey. Um, I've never been here before, but my friend Nico here uh, lived really close by and spent a lot of time in his childhood. So we're just uh, checking it out. He's showing me around. There's stuff moving. No, that's snow. <laughs> okay, let's give it a go. So there's signs for thin ice. Let's see how thin the thin ice is. Oh yeah, it's warm. Yeah, so I wanna get the shrubbery on this side with the leading line of this log, since I'm on it. I think it'll look cool. Let's try right here. Get down low, kinda get an interesting angle. And, okay, so here I've got the white log in between me. And I'm just gonna check my meter because I don't want it to be fooled by how white this is. So I'm at 5.6. I can probably go to 3.5, but maybe I'll go to F4. And let's see what I'm at. I think I can go 150th of a second. 160th, how's that? That's all right, I'm at 24. I'm just gonna back it up a bit. Get a stable surface here. Nice, okay, let's get down low. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's fun. Didn't sink through yet. So right now we're kind of in the shade and we're getting the nice kind of golden hour sun coming through. And I'm just looking for color. I'm shooting slide film. So, you know, I'm not shooting black and white. I have color to play with. And so I'm looking for where the light's interesting. So right now it's all kind of bland. It's kind of just gray, but we're trying to find spots where the light's coming in through and 
we can get some interesting shots. So much texture here. Yeah, owls are the hardest uh, to find. They're so good at camouflaging too. Sometimes you just think you see one, but it's just tree. Yeah, there's a bald eagle up in that tree. We just saw it fly in. Be awesome to catch it. Sometimes you just gotta be patient. Oh, there it goes. Did you hear that? I'm gonna see if I can throw, oh, there's another one. His friend's flying around. Oh, wow. It's Talon, it's clutching its Talon. Look straight at us, looking for food. Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see if I got him. I think that was like four clicks. Um, I saw him kind of peek his head out. I think he probably saw some food or maybe something spooked him and off he went. And uh, it's a little locked on with um, continuous autofocus and uh, I was on manual, so 1 25th of a second, so hopefully, hopefully it turns out. Thanks so much for coming out today. Uh, thank you to Nico to help me out with filming today. Uh, we're just going to head back home now to the studio and check out the photos back from the lab. It's been about two weeks since um, my buddy Nico and I went out to Blackie Spit Park, so it's actually kind of fun to forget what I shot, and now I'm going to be seeing it again for the first time. Yeah, this was the, uh, I think this was a juvenile um, bald eagle that we found. And if anyone knows better, I'm sure there's somebody who can correct me. So chime in in the comments and let me know um, what these birds are. So I'm really excited to know if I was able to capture that bird that took off, the uh, the bald eagle that took off at the end of the uh, the video there. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm, I'm really excited and anxiously awaiting to, to come to those photos. I love the colors though. So far, like the exposure looks bang on. If we're looking at the histogram over here, um, there's definitely like a, a very distinctive Velvia look to it. And I think, you know, it looks great. Like for, for nature, uh, wildlife photography, it's a little bit of something different that you're not going to see um, too often. I haven't seen that many um, nature photographers that are still shooting on, on slide film. So I think it's kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, and this is exactly what I was hoping for. This is one of the worst lenses that Nikon's ever made. This is the 24 to 120 f 3.5 to 5.6. I used to work for a local studio and we actually used this lens on pretty much all the cameras because it would soften people's pores and faces and wrinkles. So the portraits would actually turn out more pleasing to people because the lens was so soft. But soft lenses are kind of the opposite of what we're looking for. Everyone's looking about sharpness and you know all this resolution, tr trying to get uh, trying to get all that resolution out of a lens. And this lens does the exact opposite. But I think on a film camera, there's a potential for it to come alive again. So this was uh, shot, I believe, at f/8, if I'm not mistaken. I love the colors, even for a 24 millimeter lens. Um, the distortion doesn't look that bad. And this was uh, cameraman Nico Myra here. He's rocking the uh, FX6 and um, the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8. Thanks again, Nico, for helping me out. Cool. Yeah, I was going for this the symmetry um, on this shot, but the you know the tough thing is is that there's not a lot of highlights um, in slide film. The latitude is pretty narrow if the dynamic range of the of the scenario is going to be very deep um, a lot of shadows and a lot of highlights that you might lose one or the other so in this case you know looking back I probably should have done a bracketing shot and exposed for the sky and then exposing for um, the barnacles and the wood here but you know lesson learned cool so this was uh, just kind of getting really close to the barnacles and looks trippy yeah, the colors are really pretty. Not bad for the for the close focusing on that lens. Cool. 
yeah, there's like a just a pack of pack of ducks. I don't know what you call a group of ducks. A group of ducks just hanging out here in the um, in the ocean. And then in the mid ground, in the background, you can see the city, and in the deep background, you can see the mountains of Vancouver, and uh, you can see the bridges, and you can kind of see you know everything um, in Vancouver in this one shot, which I thought was cool. Oh, cool! Um, so this was a seagull that I caught dropping what I think is a clam. I saw him picking it up, trying to break it open, and then I saw him fly with it in its mouth, and then try to drop it. But he was dropping it on sand, so he wasn't that successful. But you know, I'm I'm happy I got this shot. This was on still on the um, 24 to 120. Oh wow! Okay, so the the snow on that shot when I was crossing the log, completely blown out. Yeah, that's tough. Like the the latitude on slide I'm learning is not that good. Um, so something that I'm going to keep in mind for the future. Yeah, I can't see anything. It's completely clipped. As you can see here, the, the snow is completely clipped out, which doesn't look great, but I think the composition is still kind of cool. I was kind of going for the um, the Japanese concept of wabi-sabi, and that was kind of my inspiration for this shot. Yeah, this one's a bit better, so I'm, I'm glad I kind of, you know, recomposed and did something different because now this clipped log isn't as um, evident in the shot. And so your eyes are kind of more drawn to the textures in the snow and on this lake or pond. And I just think it's a little more interesting to look at. Oh, cool. I kind of wish I did a few different um, compositions with this one. I was really focused on the textures on the, on the pond here. I thought that was really cool with the sun kind of coming through the trees here and reflecting on the pond. But I do wish I did a portrait um, like a vertical shot so that I could see more of the trees up here. What do you guys think? I was kind of trying to place the horizon higher up on the frame um, and I think it looks okay but you know curious what you guys think about this shot. I was hoping for more. Okay so here's the the eagle that flew away. I can see the thumbnails now. Here's open. It was really tough so the light was going down it was like nearly dusk at this point so I think I was at like maybe um, yeah, 1 60th of a second, 1 25th of a second, and uh, just really trying to isolate the eagle as much as I could, but, you know, it's still a very busy background. And this is on the 500mm f5.6, so 5.6 is not that, uh, you're not going to get that shallow depth of field. Wow. Just caught him looking straight at us, that was cool. Okay, so here it takes off. This is the first shot. This is my reaction of it taking off. Oh, wow. So close. I wish this was sharper. Oh. You know, it didn't work out. I still got some kind of, um, I got some cool shots, but nothing's, nothing's what I was hoping for, unfortunately. You know, I'm going to throw this into Sharpen AI. Uh, I use a software called Topaz Sharpen AI. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it might be able to work some magic and I might be able to get a bit more detail out of this. If I do, I'll post it on my Instagram and you guys can check it out. This is Rocky Point Park in Port Moody and the pier is always really nice. Um, I, one year I did dragon boat racing here and just thought I'd come out here and take some photos. So in the last episode on my channel, Angus and I went to a bird sanctuary, and this is actually where I finished up the rule of film. So this bird here is called an American bittern, and some other photographers and wildlife um, enthusiasts in the park had pointed this out to us. If they didn't, we wouldn't have seen this. It was, you know, just being so quiet, being so gentle in the swamp, and, you know, just it was very shy and skittish and we were just very quiet and kind of waiting it out so check out my previous video if you want to see the behind the scenes of this guy I love the legs on this thing it like had these really long almost like bamboo kind of looking legs cool 
Yeah, I'm really happy with the exposure and the uh, autofocus on these shots. It was quite tough to isolate this guy because um, its colors and its feathers really blended in with its surroundings. So trying to wait for it to come out of the the woods, the, the tall grass, waiting for it to come out into this kind of more swampy area was what I was hoping for and thankfully it did. So the chickadees and the ducks you're allowed to feed and so the chickadees just love coming up to humans. And I'm not sure what these ones are called. Um, they have a red and yellow feathering under, like on their wing. And uh, they're everywhere. They're uh, really cool. Nice. And then this was just the last few shots. I had to go downtown to finish up a shoot with my client. So I just grabbed a couple more photos of the building downtown. This one, uh, these shots were on the Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8 at around f8. And if you're local, you know that Nordstrom's actually leaving Canada. And so I wanted to grab this shot to kind of, you know, remember this this setting and it's never going to be the same. And that's the last shot on this roll of film. So, thanks so much for watching. Um, overall, I'm, I feel like there was a couple shots here that I'm, I'm pretty happy with, but I was really hoping for the eagle shots to turn out and, you know, I, I hope I can do something with it. Um, I still think they're they're neat and they've got like a a unique film look to them, but I just really wish I was able to freeze that in action. Um, I think it's, I think this one's probably my favorite one of the bunch, um, but yeah, I really wish, you know, it was just crisper. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. These were really fun shoots to go on, so I'm really glad you got to see the behind the scenes. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe and feel free to find me on Instagram. I'd love to chat. See you next time.